Can you speak to the evolution from the smaller to the bigger of the T-Rex? What what were some of the evolutionary pressures? What like what, what what's the story of the so evolution? So tyrannosaurs go back to the middle Jurassic. So tyrannosaurs were around for 100 million years. So from about 160-ish 165-ish million years till the extinction 66.5 I think is the current dating on that. So yeah, you got 100 million years of them and the middle Jurassic annoyingly is probably the bit of the Mesozoic so the whole dinosaur period that we know the least of. Just by chance we just don't have many rocks exposed of the right age that are fossil bearing. Um but we got two or three tyrannosaurs from that time and yeah, they're they're really quite diddy. Yeah, they'd be chest high to us, 2 or 3 meters long including the tail, probably more like 3 a lot of them. Um little heads Long arms. They, they look like every other carnivore going. There's there's not a lot special to them um, at this point. They've only just separated from their nearest groups, which is actually something like the ancestors of Giganotosaurus, actually. Um, they do have the fused nasals early on. They do have these special little teeth at the front of the jaw very early on. They're feathered early on. Definitively, we have skeletons with feathers on them that are early tyrannosaurs. Uh, at least until the early Cretaceous. Um, but yeah, they're knocking around as relatively small animals in Europe and Asia. We have a couple from the UK. Uh, we have a whole bunch from China. There's stuff from like Kyrgyzstan and places like this. I think there's one, a relatively early one from Russia. Um, and then when they get into the early Cretaceous, they start getting quite a bit bigger. Uh, so something like Eutyrannus, if you want to. There you go. So Eutyrannus is fuzzy. Um, we have three specimens definitively feathered. Um, it gets to <laughs> six, seven meters long. <laughs> There's something funny looking about the sexy, smaller, earlier version of the T-Rex. But, but again, this is seven, eight meters, maybe weighs half a ton or a ton. Like we, we are very much on the menu for an animal that size and it's yeah. massive and dangerous. Quite what triggered them, there's general patterns in evolution of size change, and one famous one called Coates Rule I've worked on a fair bit, which is the idea that over time things tend to get bigger, and they do for various different reasons, one of which is just pure, almost like diffusion. If you start small and you evolve, well, you can't get much smaller, but you can always get bigger, so you, you naturally kind of diffuse away, whereas if you're a blue whale you probably can't get much bigger and its descendants will probably end up being smaller. But there are reasons that bigger things do better. You can hunt more stuff, you're more energy efficient, you can move more efficiently, um, you're dominant in contests, particularly with conspecifics. If you're trying to win a territory or win mating rights, bigger things usually beat up smaller things. So there's going to be selection favoring them. Um, but then big things don't usually do well in extinction events. So that tends to reset the clock by killing off the big stuff and then smaller stuff does better. Again. So mostly there's evolutionary advantages, but, but a fairly big one. So yeah, it's the, it's the classic thing of there's a day to day advantage of being bigger and that might last for a few million years, right up to the point that suddenly there's the biggest drought the earth has encountered in 5 million years. And then all the big stuff just gets nailed. Also, we should probably say, is this accurate to say that the bigger you get, the fewer of you there, there are, are yeah there's there's just less fundamental space you know there's more mice than there are elephants there are more elephants than there are whales like there's only so much biomass that an ecosystem can support and bigger things are just worse at repopulating in extinct yeah, events for example right so that so, so they're less likely to survive because they need more fuel you know what would feed a mouse for a year won't feed an elephant for a week so if and and of course the mice are going to have an easier time finding a few little seeds than elephants going to find tons of food. And then they've got less genetic diversity. There might be 5,000 mice, there might be 200 elephants. So who's likely to have more genes or who's likely to have selection acting on those genes to produce a survivor? Well, the one with five or 10 or a thousand times the population. And then, yeah, on top of that, you've then got the very slow reproductive cycle, which then, again, gives it evolution not a lot to work with if as an elephant you're breeding once every five years and as a mouse you're doing it once every eight weeks what can we say about the the evolution of just the the massive bone crushing power of so so that starts kicking in seriously kind of uterana size and up so that's when you start getting they're not just bigger animals that are getting to a comparable size to the other big dinosaur carnivores of the time you start getting those bigger heads but even then, 
relatively late in Tyrannosaur evolution, so getting into kind of the middle part of the late Cretaceous, you, you see a split, and we have a group called the Aleoramines, um, which have really, really long, thin skulls, and they look much more like a kind of, here's a velociraptor, they look much more like a giant velociraptor-ish than a Tyrannosaur. Still relatively small arms, um, but it's a, it's a very long snout, and so this is a fast-biting animal with a relatively light bite, so it's probably taking really quite small stuff proportionally. And then the other side, you've got the Tyrannosaur eins, which are the really big-headed ones, and so that is few ancestral things like Albertosaurus and Gorgosaurus, um, from Al both from Alberta, um, but then Daspolidosaurus, a thing I named called Jicheng Tyrannus in China, and then Tarbosaurus and Tyrannosaurus. And you've really only got three or four of these ultra giants, which are all kind of 10 meters plus in size, and then have the really broad skull with the real kind of excessive bite force. But even things like Albertosaurus, which is I mean, a big animal, seven, seven, eight meters here, yeah, ton or so. They're not quite T-Rex, but they're definitely more robust than the other contemporaneous carnivores. So there is this progression of getting bigger, getting a bigger head. The teeth get bigger, but there's fewer of them building up the bone biting and the, and the power. Um, but with some interesting evolutionary off branches in the way that, yeah, cats are largely much of a muchness, but then you get things like, you know, like bobcats and lynx, which are actually quite bulky, stocky little cats that don't have the long tail and are doing something quite different. 